Where you going? And I anticipated that. And no, I think you kicked the extra point. First, the touchdown. A must. As Manning rolls out, he has Klecko open, and Klecko is in for the touchdown. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Before we get into that, we got to start from the beginning. And that beginning starts along the Delaware River in a small town called Chester, Pennsylvania. The oldest city in Pennsylvania. And none other than the birthplace to Football Hall of Famer, Joe Klecko. Now this story isn't about Joe Klecko, no. This story is about his son, Dan Klecko. Okay, so Dan may have been born in Chester, but his football career was born in Colts Neck, New Jersey, where he would graduate and play his high school football for Marble High. Here, he would cement himself a place in the record books by setting the Marble High career record with 28 sacks and 107 solo tackles. Now, it was clear that Dan was going to play football after high school. After all, football was literally in his DNA. So when it came time to choose a college, Dan had to make a decision. Dan grew up wanting to attend Syracuse and becoming an orange man was always his dream. However, like most big schools, they considered Dan undersized and therefore limited his colleges to choose from. And at five foot 11 inches tall and 283 pounds, his dad's alma mater came knocking and at Temple University, Dan would make a name for himself by earning the Big East Conference's Defensive Player of the Year in 2002, while emerging as a two-time All-Big East player while at Temple. Now that Dan was finished with his senior season at Temple, he would jump right into Temple's Pro Day in hopes of impressing one of the many NFL scouts in attendance. However, it is well documented that most of the NFL scouts had remarked that Dan was undersized. I know, you'd think by now, with a stellar college career under his belt, Dan wouldn't have to prove that size was a problem. Well, when it was time for the 2003 NFL Combine, Dan did what Dan always had done, his best. Dan would impress coaches and scouts with his strength, skill, and determination at the Combine. However, he would be given just a 46 out of 100 grade, as the NFL could just not see past his size. With the uh, first choice in the 2003 draft, the Cincinnati Bengals select Carson Palmer. No, Dan did not go number one in the draft. I mean, look at the 2003 draft class. It was absolutely packed with talent. Carson Palmer, Andre Johnson, Terrence Newman, Terrell Suggs, Troy Palomalu, Jason Witten, Lance Briggs, and Charles Tillman, Anquan Bolden, and Dallas Clark. Dan would wait until the fourth round before being selected by the New England Patriots as the 117th pick overall. And if being drafted wasn't enough, Dan would receive a phone call from New England Patriots head coach, Bill Belichick. In that phone call, Bill would tell Dan, I'm going to draft you. I don't know how I'm going to use you, but I want you on our team. That year, the New England Patriots would go on to have one of the franchise's best drafts ever in selecting defensive end Ty Warren out of Texas A&M, then defensive back Eugene Wilson from Illinois, wide receiver Bethel Johnson, teammate of Ty Warren, fourth pick was Dan Klecko, as we all know, defensive back Asani Samuel from Central Florida, center Dan Copen, Boston College, backup quarterback Cliff Kingsbury, Texas Tech, and Tolly Banta Kane, linebacker, Cal. In his first year with the Patriots, Bill Belichick would utilize Dan on both sides of the ball. Dan could be tackling and sacking a quarterback one second and then catching a pass the next. The New England crowd absolutely loved it when Dan came onto the field. I mean, there wasn't anything Dan couldn't do. He's recording a sack one week and a reception in another while creating running lanes for his running back. Dan would enjoy a three-year career with New England that blessed him with two Super Bowl rings and a record of 38 wins and just 10 losses. 
Dan was on a New England team that would win the Super Bowl in the 2003-2004 season and again in the 2004-2005 season. However, like all good things, they must come to an end. But do they? After the 2005 season, a season that would end in a playoff road game loss for the Denver Broncos, Dan would be released that offseason, just one year shy of fulfilling his four-year contract. It didn't take long for Dan to land a new job. In less than 24 hours after he was waived by the Patriots, Dan would receive an offer from general manager Bill Polian to join the Indianapolis Colts. Dan would now be inserted into a Ron Meeks defensive scheme, one that valued smaller players, and an offense ran by Hall of Fame signal caller Peyton Manning. Here, coach Tony Dungy would use Dan in the same ways he was using New England, primarily as a fullback to run block for running back Joseph Adai. Indianapolis is where Dan would cement himself a place in history. In his first season, in a game on New Year's Eve against the Nick Saban-led Miami Dolphins, Dan would line up at fullback on a second and goal line play. Quarterback Peyton Manning would audible the play by moving the backs out of the eye formation and flanking two tight ends out to the right. Then, sending Dallas Clark in motion, who if you remember was also in Dan's draft class, to the left. After some Manning verbiage, the ball was hiked and Dan began his shallow route into the end zone where he would become only one of five players to ever catch a pass from both Tom Brady and Peyton Manning. This would also be Dan's first NFL touchdown, a memorable one no doubt, but if you ask Dan, his next touchdown was the one that he holds closest. They are the best. Their generation Just three weeks after his first NFL touchdown, Dan and the Indianapolis Colts would find themselves in the AFC Championship game against a familiar foe, the New England Patriots. That's right, the same team that Dan was drafted by and won two Super Bowls with in what is arguably considered one of the most anticipated AFC Championship games of all time, pitting Brady against Manning for the second time in a championship game. The New England Patriots would come out strong on both sides of the ball, scoring two offensive touchdowns and holding the Colts' offense to just a field goal. On the Colts' first possession of the second quarter, Patriots' corner, Asante Samuel, would return a Manning interception for a touchdown to make it a three-score game. But after falling behind 21-6 at the half, the Colts would come out and score on their very first possession, making it a 21-13 game on a quarterback sneak from the goal line. The Colts' defense would then force the Patriots to another three and out. And once the ball was back in Peyton's hands, he went and looked back, leading the team to the end zone with four minutes to go in the third quarter. After a Patriots pass interference call in the end zone, Dan would check back into the game on a first and goal from the one yard line. This time, Dan would remain as the fullback in the I formation, with Joseph Padai lined up behind him. With an audible from Manning, the ball was hiked, and Dan ran his shallow route he'd ran against Miami earlier. That would be Dan's second touchdown of his career, one that would help the Colts advance the Super Bowl 41 against the Chicago Bears, where the Colts would eventually hang on to win their first Super Bowl in 36 years not to mention the third Super Bowl win for Dan. And here's what Dan had to say regarding his touchdown in that AFC Championship game in a 2019 interview with On Air with Christian Shanafelt. Your belt, uh, most memorable play of Dan Klecko's career. I mean, I'd be a fool not to say the uh, AFC Championship game touchdown, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, they call the goal line play and, and uh, you know, I go in, one with the Colts at the time. And we're playing the Patriots, the team that re had released me the year before, and this is to tie the game. And, uh, you know, I line up, and, and that morning we had put an audible in, and I can remember it was uh, round 546, was, you know, and uh, if you watch the film, you can see Peyton call it. He's apple, apple, and he changes the play, and I'm thinking, all right, no shot, he's going to throw it to me. And I see that, that, big, that big bucket head getting ready to throw it to me, and, oh, man, I'm like, please don't drop it. And, uh, you know, I catch the ball over probably my best friend on the Patriots, Mike Brabel. And uh, I get up and I spike the ball, and, and I didn't realize Braves was laying there. And I'm like, oh, man, I feel horrible I just did that. But, you know, that was a pretty special play in my career to uh, to, to be a part in that game where, you know, we, we finally beat the big bad Patriots as the Colts. And, um, you know, got to go to the Super Bowl, Peyton's, Peyton's first one. 
Dan would be re-signed by the Colts the following year, in a season that would end in the divisional round of the playoffs against the San Diego Chargers. During the 2008 offseason, Dan would be shipped off to his hometown team, the Philadelphia Eagles, a place Dan had always dreamed of playing. The Eagles intended to convert him to fullback. He was brought in to compete with the incumbent Jason Davis, after the Eagles traded for former teammate Luke Lawton. Klecko was moved back to his natural defensive tackle position, where he would register a sack against the St. Louis Rams in his first game for the Eagles. A quarter of the way through the season, it was announced that Klecko would be moved back to fullback. He would then switch his jersey number from 68 to 49. Dan said in an interview, he wouldn't trade the experience he got playing fullback for anything in the world. He would go on to say how much he respected those that played the position, as it was physically tough position. He may have been short, but Dan played the fullback position at 280 pounds and ran just as quick as anybody. In his only season with the Eagles, Dan would make it again to the playoffs, this time falling in the NFC Championship game to the Kurt Warner-led Arizona Cardinals. At the season's end, Dan would then be signed by the Atlanta Falcons on a reserve future contract. Unfortunately, he would be waived on September 3rd, 2010, just prior to the start of the season. What's up, Eagles fans? I'm Dan Klecko, and this is the Old School All-22. Life after football has been good to Dan. He was hired by the Philadelphia Eagles as their post-game color commentator while working for Gallagher Insurance as a risk management consultant, where he acts as a mentor for those in the Special Olympics. Dan was born into football and will most certainly be part of it for the rest of his life. He may not have the Hall of Fame statistics, but what he does have is something to truly be proud of. God bless all of you, and God bless football.